Well, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. And it really is an absolute pleasure uh, to join you all here today for what I understand is your 28th National Conference No Frills. Uh, can I just acknowledge Tamaru and that beautiful welcome to country that we just had? And I couldn't agree with you more. And I think those beautiful feathers really do reflect the fact that women's issues, men's issues, the only way we actually solve any issue is to walk together hand in hand. So thank you so much for that beautiful welcome to country, Tamaru. Uh, can I also thank Simon, a fellow Western Australian, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for hosting us here today. But can I also acknowledge my very, very good friend and your South Australian minister, David Pasoni. There is nothing better as a federal minister than working with a state minister who says to you, and David and I have worked together for some time now, David, haven't we? Um, Michaelia, I just want to kick goals. What can we do together? And that is the relationship that we have. I want to kick goals for South Australia. David wants to kick goals for South Australia. And I hope you want to join us in kicking goals together. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've had the election and we've seen the return of the Morrison government. I was absolutely delighted when the Prime Minister called me and said, Michaelia, I would like you to be my Minister for Employment, Skills, Small and Family Business. This is my old stomping ground, but it has literally now come together in a portfolio that recognises that small and family business in particular are the job creators in this country. And we need to focus our policies to ensure that they can prosper, grow and create more Australians. The portfolio also recognises, though, that we need to ensure that people who are not in employment are given the appropriate programs and services to get them off welfare if they're on welfare and into work. But sitting in the middle of the portfolio quite deliberately is why we are here today. And that is, of course, the strong focus on skills. During the election campaign, I was out and about every day in another electorate. I visited so many people, um, but there was one clear and consistent message that I received. I don't think it will surprise any of you to know that that message was jobs jobs, jobs. Whether or it is employing someone with the right skills, and that's what we're going to talk about today, or training students with job-ready skills. Jobs, jobs, jobs is the very clear message that we as a government were given, and I can assure you it is something that we will work with you to deliver on. 2019, Industry 4.0. Where are we now and what is the feedback that I'm receiving, that, that David is receiving in relation to today's workforce? As you all know, the skills that are needed for today's workforce, they are fundamentally different to what they were even 12 months ago. They are constantly evolving. And what we are hearing from employers is that they are more and more looking at wanting workers who are job ready with practical skills and an employment history. And to me, that is exactly what a vocational education provides. As you know, VET helps to increase the number of Australians in employment by assisting job seekers with the skills that they need, but it also assists employers to actually get the employees with the skills that they also need. So in other words, it gets the right person into the right job. When I became the Minister for Vocational and Education and Training last year, the very first speech I gave, which was 24 hours after I was sworn in, I said to the sector, you will have a minister that is passionate about lifting the profile of vocational education and training in Australia. And I believe that is exactly what we are doing together. For me, for the Morrison government, we acknowledge that vocational education and training is a valuable career choice for many, many Australians 
And as we look forward, it will be for more and more Australians. But you may have read the article in the Australian newspaper today. I am of the belief, and I know you're of the belief, and Minister Pisani and I have spoken of this on many occasions. It should not be seen as being any less important than a university degree. In that regard, I just want to share with you a recent article in Sydney's Daily Telegraph. What the article spoke about was how embarking on a career path in vocational education and learning a trade can be incredibly, as we know, financially rewarding. And this is something that we really do need to ensure that in particular our young people understand. The article went on to explain, many tradies are increasingly earning more than those with university degrees and are finding that there are more job opportunities out there for those in trades. The article then went on to say that the average salaries for machinists, electricians and electrical distribution workers are now higher than the average salaries for advertising executives, counsellors and human resource managers. And that is what we need in particular our young people to understand. This is a fabulous career path. It opens so many doors for you. And at the same time, it is as lucrative and in some cases more lucrative than those careers that you would obtain by getting a university degree. In terms of the return of the Morrison government, uh, we've made it very, very clear that one of our priorities is ensuring that Australians have the skills that they need and to ensure that they can get the jobs that employers are now advertising for. And of course, VET is going to be key to all of that. I was looking at some of your actual data and I loved this particular sentence. Your own data shows us that VET is a system. It is not just an option for young school leavers. And that to me really sums up where vocational education and training needs to be seen by the broader Australian public. It is a system, not just an option for young school leavers. And why is that? Because more and more Australians, more and more employees, people who are currently in employment are and will be training and upskilling. What the NCVER data shows is that approximately one quarter of VET students are aged 45 and over and two thirds are 25 and over. So when you look at that data and you look at that statement, it is a system, not just an option. What we see is VET vocational education and training is the tool that is going to enable Australians to skill for life, which is exactly what your conference theme over the next two days is going to be discussing. So what is our role as a government? As a newly elected government that has said skills is a priority for us. We need to deliver in this regard. VET is therefore central to our plan for a stronger economy. We know our economy is changing. We know it is growing. But we also know that we need to have a system to ensure that our skills system is able to grow and adapt with the changing nature of work. If you look at where the demand of, uh, for skills actually currently is, it is shifting from manufacturing to the services sector, but also to those emerging industries like advanced manufacturing, ICT and cyber security. We have a world-class vocational education and training system. It has faced some challenges over the last few years, but we are rectifying those policy challenges. But what we do know is that despite having a world-class vocational education and training system, it does need an upgrade. Why does it need an upgrade? Because we want to ensure that it remains world-class. We want to ensure that it is modern, but more than anything, we need a system that is flexible and adaptable to the changing nature 
of work. So prior to the election, we commissioned the Joyce Review. What the Joyce Review confirmed for us was that it acknowledged the fantastic work undertaken in the vet sector so far. But what it also said was that the vet sector needs to adapt so that it can support important and emerging industries and become what I'm very passionate about, and I know what Minister Pasoni is so passionate about, a first choice for students who want to pursue technical careers. As I've stated, this is a government that absolutely believes that pursuing a vocational education and training is just as valuable as a university degree. So what have we done as a government to date? We've addressed some of the quality issues in the sector and we're rebuilding the confidence in the sector. In fact, when I talk to people now, compared to when I came into the portfolio about 10 months ago now, just that difference in confidence is absolutely phenomenal. Now what we need to do together, because this is all about working together, is to strengthen the system that we have so that it can be the centre of modern skills development into the future. You all know, and I'm sure you'll be discussing this over the next two days, the nexus between skills and a strong economy will only become greater in the future. Hence, we need to ensure we have the best possible VET system that we can have. I got my department to pull us some statistics in relation to the job projections for the future. What the department's projections show is that the majority of new jobs projected in the five years to May 2023 will require post-secondary qualifications. The data goes on to show that seven out of 10 of the fastest growing occupations have a VET qualification pathway. So our job then as a government is to ensure that as a sector, you are as nimble and adaptive as the job market is in addressing skill shortages. If you look at employment growth in Australia, um, the economy is creating jobs. In fact, since we were elected in 2013, the economy has now created almost 1.4 million jobs. And over 60% of those jobs were full-time jobs. We've made a commitment as a government that over the next five years, we will put in place the policies to create an additional 250,000 jobs. The participation rate in Australia, so those people putting their hands up and saying, I'm ready, willing and able to work, is the highest it has ever been at 66%. So confidence in the jobs market is strong. But to ensure that we're able to deliver on our commitment to create the additional 250,000 jobs, the VET sector is absolutely central to this commitment. And it's why in the budget, we announced a half a billion dollar package, our delivering skills for today and tomorrow. This is all about ensuring that Australians, regardless of your age, whether you're a young person looking to make a career choice or you're somebody already in the workforce looking to upskill or reskill, you absolutely have the information that you need, the career guidance that you need to inform you of the study choices, better foundation skills training so that no one is left behind, but also core to our 250,000 jobs is, of course, creating more opportunities for apprenticeships. As you know, the federal government itself invests over $3 billion into the VET sector each year. What our skills package does is provide additional funding to support employers, workers and learners. But the focus of the skills package is about placing all of us as Australians, workers, businesses, and communities and the economy on the path to prosperity through the growth of our economy. 
I just want to take you through, and I've been asked to, exactly what we will deliver through the Joyce Review. The review itself highlighted the need to address immediate skill shortages that sections of the workforce and industry are currently facing, and to ensure that skills and training in Australia keeps pace with our changing economy. It also said that our VET system must better connect with industry. They are, after all, the job creators in our country, respond better to actual community needs and have clear and consistent funding. So what we will do through our skills package is that we will promote a national approach to skills development and we will also enhance the role of industry in designing training packages. After all, if we are not responding to the needs of industry, we are not going to be providing employers with the employees they need with the right skill set. We are also going to establish a National Skills Commission to provide leadership on workforce needs and VET funding. We will actually work with the sector though. It'll be a national co-design process which will determine the functions, remit and governance of the new commission. We will be putting industry at the heart of our VET system because again, if we do not understand the needs of industry, we will not be then providing them with the right employees. We are also going to pilot skills organisations in industries including human care services and digital technologies, including cyber security. The skills organisations will trial new industry-led methods of assessment and qualification development to align training with industry needs. We will also, though, improve the foundation literacy, numeracy and digital literacy skills of Australians, including a pilot of four tailored services for people in remote communities. We will also establish, and this is based on all of the feedback that we received from the sector when I first was appointed to the role last year, a National Careers Institute, and we will appoint a National Careers Ambassador to work with industry governments and our schools and tertiary providers to better connect skills and training choices. We also, on the 1st of July, our, our additional identified skill shortage payment commenced. And this is a payment for eligible new apprentices and employers in areas of national skill shortages. We're also putting in place the mechanisms to create up to an additional 80,000 new apprenticeships. And we also have, and many of you have commented on this, an Australian Apprentice Wage Subsidy Trial that proved so successful that on the 1st of July, we doubled the size of the program. This is the first time a government has actually trialled a wage subsidy for apprentices as opposed to an employer incentive. And the wage subsidy for eligible businesses, it actually provides you with 75% of the Apprentices Award, award Wage Subsidy in the first year, 50% in the second year, and 25% in the third year. This is all about creating opportunities in our rural and regional communities for small and family businesses. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we have an incredibly ambitious agenda, but the agenda is based on the feedback that we have received across the board. Our economic success going forward is going to basically be reliant upon the economy continuing to create jobs, but as a government and as a sector, ensuring that the people that are taking up those jobs have the skills that our employers are telling us they need. I want to work with the sector across the board so that we can continue to deliver the world-recognised vocational education and training system that we already have, but ensure that the system is modern, is relevant and flexible to adapt to our changing workforce needs. When I look at this room and I look at who's in this room today, 
and in particular your conference over the next two days. Uh, well and truly, you have pieces of the evidence that will tell us what does work, and we need to know that, but also what in practice doesn't work and what we could do better. So I very much look forward to hearing back from Simon about what you've discussed over the uh, next two days, uh, your learnings and your insights, and uh, delivering over the next three years an even better system, and we can continue to be proud of our vocational education and training system in Australia. Well done, and enjoy the conference over the next two days. Thank you.